In the past few years at Unity, we've focused a lot of investment in graphics, resulting in exponential leap forward in rendering quality. And we're just starting to build momentum. We're future-proofing our technology through a combination of partners, talent, and innovation. We work closely with partners to bring you the best and latest workflows, like Substance, a tool uniformly loved by artists that today is available in beta on the Asset Store and that is coming out of beta in spring. Substance and Unity will support HD and lightweight scriptable render pipelines with simple, intuitive workflows for both of the pipelines as well as the shader graph. And you'll be able to easily live edit Substance material parameters for real-time texture updates, whether you are an editor or at runtime for quick artist workflows. And many thanks to the Substance team for all of their hard work on this. This is what a lot of artists have been craving to get. At Unity, we also invest in people. This includes hiring the best to help you achieve your aspirations. The Unity graphics team is full of world-class talent, and I'm lucky to work with them on the architecture of our workflows and rendering pipelines. But today, I'm happy to welcome Graphene to the Unity family. <laughs> Graphene are pioneers of virtual texturing and efficient texture streaming. And with ever-increasing device resolution and complexity of scenes that is rising steeply, we need higher density textures, and more of them, more than ever now. And Graphene will help us boost our architecture and provide best-in-class artist workflows for comprehensive virtual texture streaming. Welcome, Graphene. <laughs> Much of graphics innovation comes from ex our extensible and configurable scriptable render pipeline architecture, as well as our artist workflows. We want to make sure to give you the right tools for the right job. Last year, we harnessed the power of real-time ray tracing for accelerating lighting workflows through a real-time pass tracer to bake lighting with our GPU progressive light mapper, which is now available in preview. But this is just the beginning of our real-time ray tracing journey. We needed to make amazing, offline quality professional graphics accessible to all of our users in real-time frame rates so that they could take full advantage of the ray tracing technology. And with real-time ray tracing, interactive graphics reaches new levels of realism, which allows for truly dynamic global rendering effects, possible at realistic game-level fast frame rates. Let's take a look at what our real-time ray tracing technology can accomplish. Invent yourself and then reinvent yourself. Don't swim in the same slough. Invent yourself and then reinvent yourself. And stay out of the clutches of mediocrity. Invent yourself and then reinvent yourself. Change your tone and shape so often that they can never categorize you. Reinvigorate yourself and accept what is but only on the terms that you have invented. Be self-taught. And reinvent your life, because you must. It is your life. And its history and the present belong only to you. I'd say this looks pretty sweet. This was a huge accomplishment done in partnership with NVIDIA, BMW, Light and Shadows, and many groups at Unity. Truly, this was an effort where we were in it together. Montreal, Copenhagen, Paris, Detroit, Seattle, and San Francisco. But what did you just see? A beautiful car? Yeah. There are 22 sequences in this video in total. Half of them are filmed on location with a real-world car, and half of them our CG vehicle. Eh, what's the big deal? Car commercials these days, pretty much everybody renders stuff in CG. Yes, but they take a couple of hours per frame to do that. This CG car in the video is rendered in Unity in 4K at interactive frame rates 
using the power of real-time ray tracing in HDRP on NVIDIA RTX GPU. And in several of the shots, the CG car is seamlessly transitioned to the live film car. Do you know which one is real? It's pretty hard to tell, and that's exactly the point. I'll tell you a funny story. So we were working on a demo, and we were providing feedback on the shots to keep improving. I put together a set of notes on a particular shot, and Danny, one of the artists on the team who was working on the demo, very gently pointed out that that specific shot was, in fact, film. Well, there's not much we're going to change about that. In many of the shots, the CG objects are flawlessly integrated in the complex real-world scenes with objects, people, lighting environment. Now, we want to take a deeper look under the hood at what's happening in this VFX sequence. And to do that, I'm going to invite Natalie Burke, lead technical artist, to help me. Hey, everyone. In the high-definition render pipeline, we are already performing physically accurate computations for lighting and shadowing. But in the rasterization world, we operate on small, local parts of the scene. These are clever approximations, the screen space approaches, that run fast on console hardware. But a trained eye can easily spot when the techniques break down, when they don't match reality. And if you don't see the object in the frame, you won't see the results of that object, the reflections, on the screen. Yeah, where are the wheels? SSR. To get good-looking results with rasterization technique, you often have to do very complicated shot-specific setup. And making these work reliably across camera changes, dynamic worlds, is really hard. With ray tracing, however, it operates on the whole scene. We do lighting and shadowing globally for far more accurate rendering. Do you see the wheel reflections now, Nat? Yeah, I do. And you can see when I toggle this button on and off that the reflections are much more clear when we're using ray tracing. And that's precisely the point. Of course, this means you might need to consider it in your game or in your production, but now everything is present. The content is easy to set up. It just works. And it's far more robust for camera changes or any other dynamic elements. You truly get accurate global reflections or full scene lighting bounds. And it doesn't matter if something is or is not visible in the frame, you still get to see its impact, its reflections, shadows, whatever it is. And we give you ability with our solution to render primary rays, either with rasterization for best performance or ray tracing for highest quality, like with a full path tracer. And with that, you can get proper refractions for multi-layer transparent materials. You can kind of see some of this here. Or dynamic shadows that are globally accounting for the whole environment. Or really robust occlusion. We're now in a global space where it's all there. And you also get the full gamut of HD materials to play with. Opaque, transparent, alpha-tested, double-sided, with full shader graph support, so the artists are free to create more. And of course, dynamic real-time global illumination is a key part of delivering a fully ray tracing have ready solution. Let's look at the lighting. Now, our ray tracing tech is built on top of HDRP in C-sharp scripts and shaders, which is quick to reload and iterate. In fact, it took us about a day to build our global ambient occlusion solution. It was that easy. We provide a wide variety of ray trace effects for you to play with. But if you wanted to create your own with a hybrid HDRP, you get the full access to all of the runtime resources, and you can choose between rasterization or ray tracing at any time, object, camera, material, as you wish. You are in a driver's seat. Nice. You get great shadows from all of the objects in the scene, from these huge textured area lights, like the screen that you see here. This is something that is tremendously difficult to do with rasterization, despite all the research that's happening in this domain. Oh, and this is running at game rate rates on a single consumer NVIDIA GPU, pushing ray tracing at about 30 poly million polygons seen. 
with all of these huge textured lights and GI and occlusion and shadows and textures and so forth on the mobile form factor. As you can see, real-time ray tracing is pretty damn exciting, but it needs to be done right. And what I mean by that is this. High-fidelity content is really the biggest bottleneck for, creating, for graphics today. Creating it is hard. It's time-consuming. With our ray tracing solution, we want to empower artists to create content once and use it both for raster and ray tracing for a truly scalable solution. And this is actually easy using the shader graph technology because ray tracing becomes an LOD. And when we're on a rasterization, we use the regular shader. And on ray tracing, we use that. Best quality at best performance automatically. And because our solution is built on a hybrid rendering pipeline, this doesn't require any edge case, it's a special case. It's easy. Best of all, we're delivering production-focused ray tracing with a full preview coming in HDRP in fall 2019. This will include an early preview of a full-frame path tracer. Even better, you can start playing with our experimental HDRP build on GitHub on April 4th. Experiment away. <laughs> <laughs>